Testing one, two, check, 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 check. Am I on the internet? I think I am. Now live on your channel. Yeah, all right. So I have the email saying that I'm on. <laughs> How's everybody going? D going, doing? How are you doing? How's it going? Either one. Welcome to this random bonus stream. My name is Kurt. I'm a comic book colorist. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we are doing a very cool color. We, we, I, I. I am doing a very cool cover. You guys are going to watch. I'll say we. Maybe it feels like we're doing it together. <laughs> but guys, 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 look at this cover. What? What is this even? I get to color this. <laughs> this is the nuttiest cover that I have ever been asked to color. It's drawn by uh, my uh, friend, uh, Adam Cahoon for the nasty number five from Vault Comics. And uh, hello, everything's going great. Uh, so what am I coloring today? All the things I just told you. There you go. All the information's at the bottom. And uh, there's all sorts of hidden meanings and things in this cover that uh, people can, uh, can ogle. So... Um, Yeah, I'm just excited for this one. This would be cool. Should be cool. Should be cool. All right, people coming in here. Is it working? Notifications going out to half the people they're supposed to. Uh, all right. Good stuff. So uh, this is going to be all of my, well, not all of them. It's going to be my base colors. And the inks run a transparent layer on top. There's a lot of grays and washes and things in this, so... Um, we might do some stuff over the lines. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, but this was the first cover that I've ever actually, I, uh, I wanted to talk to the artist. <laughs> I'm like, you have to tell me what all of this is. What does it mean? Tell me everything. And so, uh, I got the scoop. I got the scoop and, uh, and now we're ready to go. And so I'm going to start with, where do I want to start? I'm going to start with like a middle of the road uh, greenish color. How about that? Where did my thing go? There we go. And again, sorry, my computer's doing weird stuff here. Give me a second. Go away, go away, and go away. Sorry, one second, guys. OBS is being weird. All right. I just learned about gradient maps. Do you use them? Um, sometimes, sometimes, not very often. They're great though. Gradient maps are awesome. Um, I just don't, uh, I don't use them very much. Um, as I've gotten a little older, I've gotten a little bit more confident in my ability to create those limited palettes <laughs> that, that I used to rely on gradient maps for. <laughs> but I, but every now and then I'll throw one on top of, uh, you know, on top of something just to get a, a color scheme going, you know, like, but, uh, but it's not, uh, it's not a big part of what I do or anything. Not regularly, but I do every technique, I think at least every now and then, <laughs> like, I think I've, I, I try them all. I try them all. Um, and uh, I'm going to try to like swamp thing this guy up with his, with as much little 
would like some color variations and really make this guy look very uh, earthy. That, that's what I'm feeling here. And, uh, and so I'll be mixing all sorts of uh, blues and browns and yellows and we'll see what comes out of this thing at the end. But I think it's gonna look awesome. I just, I have a, I have a good feeling about this cover. <laughs> I do, I do, I do. Uh, Swamp Thing is a verb now? I think so. You know what I meant when I said it, <laughs> you know? So, uh, so there's that. And um, I will say, if you notice today anything different about me, like the fact that I seem like a giddy child today for some reason, um, whatever it was, if you have been following me for the last four years, uh, whatever was wrong with my spine and my back and my body and all that crazy, weird-ass tension shit that I've been dealing with for three or four years, it's like... It just stopped. It went away. I've been working on it for a while. And the crazy thing is, I feel like my brain is working properly now. I honestly think my brain was like being squeezed or something because it's like, I feel like a new person today. I really do. I'm not exaggerating when I say that. These kind of things don't happen to people very often. So I'm very pleased about it. And uh, I'm really happy to not be in pain today. Good afternoon. This cover, it is this cover. That's all you gotta say. Very good news, happy for you. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, you guys have, maybe some of you guys have an idea, but yeah, it's just been freaking horrible. And, uh, but I don't know, like I said, I just, I feel like someone swapped my body out in my sleep last night um, but yeah, I feel good. <laughs> there we go. I just feel good. So what I'm doing right now, my thought is I'm putting in all of these dark, darkish, different colors. And then when we get done with this stage, We'll start doing lights and shadows and things, but I really just want to get as much interesting looking base colors in here all at one time first. And then we can goof around on top. Doing whatever it is else we need to do. Have we got all the leaves? Almost got all the leaves. Glad to hear it. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Thanks. Uh, all I heard, come on, stop here. Uh, bien, bien. Gracias. How do you say as good as I've ever felt in my life in Spanish? Because <laughs> that's the truth today. I feel like I woke up just in someone else's body. I cannot explain it enough. I really can't. Why is there an animation cells window open? Go away. That is weird. So, let's see. But by starting with that green base too, like I also have, you know, like there's nothing that is coming, jumping out of this because there's white paper popping through. You know what I mean? That's why I tend to start with... Uh, Get a, get a solid color in there first. I mean, and you might not even, you might cover the whole thing up, but it at least gives you a starting point. It gives you a baseline of like value and hue, and then everything else can build off of that. It's better than white. <laughs> it's better than just going white, that's for sure. Um, to start, anyway. And I'm going to get a little closer now, and we're going to keep on going. There's so much stuff in here. I love it. 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 And 
I'm, right now all of this is not really very saturated and so i might um i might pump it up just so what i do on top can kill the saturation a little bit i've done that before i don't know we'll see and this is all water I think that's water. Oh, that's nope. That's land. Let's do that. that. And this, and I thought it was just so cool. These are like lily pads, sort of. All of this is underwater. And so we've got this nice dark base on everything. All right. And so if you're if you're new here, all these colors, I'm going to turn the black off for a second. And I want you to just take a I'm going to hold down the color picker and I want you to not watch what's happening on the canvas. I want you to watch the color picker. So we're starting with this desaturated gray or, or grayish green, and then we get into the saturated greens, and we've got some blues and more warm stuff. But you see how, as I'm moving this color picker all over this canvas, how the hue is just sort of jittering over here. It's going doo -doo 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 -doo, yellows to green, yellows to green, little blue, whatever. Okay, so we're right here. So all of these colors, all of these colors live inside a cylinder over here. Some of them are less saturated, some are a little more saturated, but they're all kind of through here, right? Not any purple in there. We don't have any purple. So they're kind of here. So this becomes a pattern. Just It's a big visual pattern on this cover of relatively dark, moderately saturated greens and blues, okay? So, if I want to create a lot of contrast, and I want to bring a lot of attention to the areas of this image that are meant to be contrasting, I want you to imagine a rubber band around this whole section. And imagine that rubber band being x tight. okay? So much tension, right? So now, I want to break that tension by going outside of that area. Maybe I could grab an orange. Maybe I go, you know, pull that rubber band out here to red. Maybe I stretch it just down here into these desaturated colors. But whatever I do, I'm gonna take that band and stretch it around so that I've now got more tension on that band. That tension is the contrast, okay? So in this case, now this is kind of hard to imagine on this square because this or this circle because it's only showing hue and satur or actually saturation um so uh we don't get value okay so what that means is i want you to imagine that rubber band being pulled up okay because as we go there is a z-axis here that goes straight up you know all of these colors get lighter all the colors get darker depending on the value and so we are taking that rubber band and pulling it upward in that cylinder toward the lighter colors. And we're getting it away from all the other colors. That is the really not that complicated way that I think about color theory almost all the time. So if you're new here, that gives you a primary. And if you're not, you already heard that before. <clears throat> Excuse me. This might, uh, let's see. Hold on. El mas mejor que me sentido en mi vida. Is that close? I'm terrible. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But, uh, but yeah, that's if, hopefully that's right. I have a terrible accent. Uh, this might be a can of worms, but I don't understand how you choose from an RGB color ballot and then convert it all to CMYK. All the colors would be inaccurate. I don't understand that. Um, well, you're 
you're you're making a, a poor assumption there about all the colors being inaccurate. Um, CMYK is just a color space. It's a, it's in a number of colors. RGB is a slightly bigger number of colors, or a, a lot more colors actually. Um, if you're experienced and you know what you're doing, you just stay inside the gamut. That's all. <laughs> so. Uh, what I'm doing on this, well, I haven't yet, but I normally do, is I will turn on the CMYK preview because it barely shifts, okay? Like, I'm expecting this to shift a little because it's CMYK, but if I leave the CMYK mode on, then I'm going to see it as it would look in CMYK even if I'm working in RGB. Make sense? Anyway dark earthy colors we're gonna do different now <laughs> we're going to do stark bright colors all right so this thing is meant to be a shiny light colored metal that kind of looks like bone but it's going to be shiny and reflective and uh, it's going to look cool. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, let's see. Kurt knows what colors fall outside CMYK. It's a superpower. True. <laughs> I cannot deny it. It is my mutant ability. Uh, Celsus sent you a code for 2.0, uh, so it didn't have to be forced to use a license. Um, they're doing that for everybody. The, the, you do not have to have a subscription to have the new Clip Studio, contrary to angry Twitter. Or just Twitter. Which is probably angry today. Um... By the way, I've spent less time on social media in the last couple of months than I ever have. Uh, I strongly, strongly recommend it. <laughs> um, anyway. And I know what you're thinking right now. Look how bright that is. Look how bright that is. But it only looks bright because everything else is so dark. So look at the color. Look at the actual color. It's not that bright. We're not we're not close to white yet. The relativity is what's important. When you need something brighter, just make it brighter. But leave yourself some headroom. Leave yourself some some room. Because you can always go brighter. I'm just I'm kind of I split what I like to do. I don't know if, I don't know. It's just something I've developed and I, I, I realized that I'm doing it the other day and I wasn't really thinking about it. Whatever my base color is, I will tend to like, or whatever color I'm at right now, if I'm moving toward white, I'll sort of jump halfway from where I am toward white. Shift the color direction I want it to go. And that way you sort of eventually build up to white, you know? And so the last thing I'll do is I can do these tiny little white specular highlights and everything will look more metallic but I'm leaving room so that those white values actually have something to contrast with. Because if I actually make this uh, this helmet white, I won't have any way to do highlights on it. So, anyway, does that make sense? Watching colors get added always amazes me. Thank you. Thank you for your membership too, Mr. J. Michael Miller. <clears throat> Greetings and salutations. Thank you, David, for your membership. And Mr. Woods, thank you. Sorry, I'm trying to do that for everybody. So, Kurt, is this hue and chroma? Uh, yeah, hue and chroma, hue and saturation, however you want to look at it. All right, where was I? Right there.
so I'm sort of thinking about this is everywhere I'm putting white at the moment is sort of meant to be think about it as if it was a if it was a sculpture it would be like in relief or whatever you know what I mean like it's uh, the white parts are coming toward us or the lighter parts are coming toward us and uh, everything else is sort of receding some indications that these things actually have some depth. You guys still with me? My computer just did weird stuff. Am I here? I think I'm still here. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm here. You're keeping me awake in this hospital waiting room. Everybody okay? Everybody good? I mean, you're obviously not if you're in the hotel room, but I wish everybody uh, you're, you're with there the best. You know, whatever's going on. Uh, let's see. So, what do I want? I'm trying to think about how to. I'm gonna try something here. This one. And what if we Yeah. I wanted some of these edges to be kind of stiff as if it's uh you know, again like it's a harder material. And this guy, tell you what, I'm going to open up, let me save this. I'm going to open up another window. Window, canvas, new window. Get you a copy of it. I'm going to put it over here. So I can see the whole thing. This will be nice and subtle addition. You'll barely notice. <laughs> Kidding. Kurt, it's almost like you knew that his eyes were going to be red for maximum impact. <laughs> you should use a lot of green. No, it helps that there's, you know, there's plants. So I got to say, I was going to go green anyway. But anyway. Whoops.
Uh, daughter's having surgery. Not really a bad thing. All right. Well, I wish her well. I'm just trying to teach myself reminders, but hue is the color, value is black and white, and chroma is colors that slowly gray out. Uh, yeah, you can think about it that way. Hue is the ring. If you haven't watched, if you haven't watched that uh, "Color is a piece of cake" video, it's—I mean, it's a play on words. It's literally the shape of a cake. <laughs> okay, so like, hue is the ring around the outside. Value is the the height of that cylinder, basically. Um, and then saturation goes toward the center. So it's the you can imagine that cylinder being saturated along the edge and gray in the middle. So like if you were to cut the color cake and look at it, this square you're seeing here is what the inside of the cake would look like on one slice. Wherever you slice it is the color. It's light at the top of the cake and bottom, dark at the bottom. If you think about it that way, you know, you can visualize that 3D, the system that all your colors live in. It's a big cylinder. I'm working on a web app right now to show this, but uh, it's, it's slow going. I'm, I'm, but no, uh, so when you pick like a dark purple, you can imagine being at the bottom of the cylinder on the purple slice close to the center because it's desaturated. And you compare that to like a bright yellow, let's say. Well, that's at the, near the top of the cake. On the yellow slice, across from the purple, and if it's, if it's near the edge, then it's saturated, let's say. You know what I mean? So if you... Oh, sorry. If you think about it in those terms, contrast is just the distance between the points within that system. You know what I mean? So if you can do that, if you can think of that, it'll help. I don't actually like that little glow that I did. Take it away. Uh, quick question, how do I join the Discord? Is there is the link in the description not working? Maybe I... Maybe it is expired. Uh, let's see, expire. And whatever, let's do that and that. And I'm gonna update the link in the description. So now you should be able to use that. Sorry. There's a lot of free channels on my Discord, tons of discussion going on. Uh, around all sorts of things but if you want feedback from me don't forget to become a member or a patron or whatever and then you can join our live class every month and we get feedback and learn new cool stuff like we did yesterday <laughs> all right where was I Yeah, sorry if that link was expired or something. I, I didn't even uh, I, I never know until somebody tells me. <laughs> All right. I want to go ahead and get a little bit of this stuff, the rest of his skeleton down here. Whoops, that's not what I meant to do. So these, you know, are his bones, and it's the same, I'm going to consider it kind of the same thing as what's going on up there material-wise, but I, it'll be not quite as bright. One, just because it's smaller and at the bottom, but uh, I don't want to have it just match the brightness of that too much, because then you have two, like, fighting points of bright value trying to get attention so i can use those bright values but i'm just not using them as strongly or as in as much visual space there's much much smaller 
and I'm working within basically just following Adam's rendering here because why not? It's great. And it's also just a little too bright still, so I'm just going to tint it a little bit cool, maybe. Something, something like that. How y'all doing? Everybody good? Uh, gonna head out. Daughter's getting out of surgery. See you Wednesday. Yep, I'll be back Wednesday morning. The usual time. really just kind of hinting at the slightest bit of direction here um, in, in the lighting really not uh, doing a whole lot because it's all there uh, all the detail is there I think it looks great Now, I don't actually want, I don't think I want this thing to be quite as bright as the skeleton thing, whatever that is, the helmet thing. And it's not, but it's a little too close. So I'm going to get that away just a little bit. And then, uh, and then we can go a little bit brighter on some of these highlights. I think, whoops, what is that, stop. Do I want to shut down OBS? No, I do not. Leave me alone. It's weird. Hope all is well. Yep, yep, yep. All right, so I've got my main contrast doing what I want it to do. We got the big guy, uh, his head coming forward. We got everything else. There's a lot of little details in this. Uh, we haven't really done any lighting or anything on the rest of it yet, so uh, we're going to just get closer and start... Uh, detailing all this stuff up uh, I'm actually going to just do this on a levels adjustment there's like this um, I don't want to introduce a bunch of lighting that is not like I want this needs like really tight lighting to me like what am I trying to say um Like I want it mathematically right, <laughs> so I'm using a, um, I'm using a levels adjustment to tint every. I'm just I'm using these selections as tests just to see what the light looks like, and uh, let's see, lean a little bit yellow, I think. Oh yeah 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 yeah. That stuff is going to look nuclear compared to that red. I like it. All 
right, so that levels adjustment is here and it's on, uh, has a mask. And so I'm gonna paint on the mask. Value is more like saturation than the amount of black. Yeah, it's just saturation levels, yeah. All right, got that. Uh, right, beautiful work as always. Thank you, David. Have a good one. Excuse me, I still have CNYK preview on, so even though I'm dealing with these greens that are notoriously, um, excuse me, getting to bright desaturated greens are very commonly an issue in CMYK because that whole section of the color picker doesn't really print very well if you're very saturated. So um, that is why I started so desaturated. So I've got room to adjust that after the fact. Is that water? That is water, I think. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so I'm just gonna get uh, under all my other rendering, like this. Blue. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty. How are y'all doing? Everybody good? Uh, so yeah, this part from a from a uh, color standpoint is very simple. Everything is being uh, is getting brighter and is being leaned uh, a little toward uh, yellowy green. And I'm not just hitting every leaf equally. Like some might be a little brighter, some might catch a little more light than others. And I'll, it's subtle right now, but I'll make it even bigger later. Um, if you throw in just like one leaf that has like a lot of, a lot more brighter than the rest or something at just the right angle, like it goes a long way. It doesn't take very much work, but it, um, it does a good job of making it feel random and feel more like nature just to have like one random bright one or a random dark one or whatever. Um, I am so sorry that my computer keeps, it's like commands on my computer that I'm doing my keyboard are, are doing things on my other monitor instead of in clip. What would cause that? <laughs> Any ideas? You know, he told me which one of these characters was which, and now I'm starting to wonder if I remember right. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, they're they're in here. Would you use a lasso at any point when coloring leaves? Um, maybe. I mean, I don't really see a need for it right now with, with this. Um, but I might do, like, tighten it up at the end, polish it up a little bit with some sharp specular highlights or something. But I don't, I don't really feel a need for it, you know. Because you can get a pretty hard edge on this brush if you press or it can go really soft. It's totally, completely up to just how much pressure you're using. And actually, I think that is also 
water. Going this way, these are lily pads. So I'm kind of treating them as if they're in the water there. I love these kind of covers because it's just it's all organic and it's all flowy and loose and there's no you know there's no straight lines like anywhere <laughs> This stuff is very fun just to render. Like, it's just fun to do to me. Want to ask your opinion, been working with a client for about a year and a half on several hundred pages. Needless to say, I'm not happy with the work I did back on page one. Seeing as how this is going to have going to be published with my name attached, do I go back and touch up his old pages or just make the new pages match for the old for consistency's sake? Uh cover looks amazing, by the way. Thank you. Um, um man, that's tough, dude. Like if you have time and are willing and want to, and they don't care, and you want to go back, then do it. But, uh, you know, uh, a subtle coloring style shift over a 100 page book, you are probably 100 times more worried about that than they are, honestly. I, I honestly don't think people notice coloring style changes almost at all. Unless you're one of us, or you're an artist that drew it, or you're an editor that really knows what they're doing. Um, but, um, yeah, I don't, uh, personally, I would just roll with it. I mean, 100 pages, that's a lot of room to improve, especially if you're new. I, I've got series like that, where the first issue starts, and it's like, it's okay, it looks alright. But a third issue, and we're like, really synced up, and it looks fantastic. I look back at one and like, why didn't I do that then? I just, you know, so like, I don't know. I mean, obviously like if it's like a massive stylistic shift or something, then like, sure. But it's like, oh, you got a little better at handling the line art. I, <laughs> I think that's normal. I would, I mean, don't, uh, you know, don't put that in stone somewhere and be like, Kurt told me to just say F it and not worry about it. And, uh, you know, <laughs> so, you know, see, see how it goes. But unless, you know, I, I wouldn't do more work unless they're paying you for more work. I love Adam and yours work so much. Congrats on the Dope Vault series. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, I don't think I want... I just think I want these people to just all... I mean, not blend completely, but I don't really want them, like, jumping out at the reader. I, I And I'll ask Adam about this. Um, I, I, I told him I was on, and I, just because he wanted to know, and, and it's no warning at all, so he might not be here. But um, but my, my, my thinking is... You know, they just sort of sneak up on the reader and like, oh, look at that. Isn't that cool? There's a little guy in there. And then all of a sudden it becomes a whole thing. So, but then I'll ask when I'm done, you know, he might, I'm not going to do more than that. I'm just, I'm, but uh, that's my theory. <laughs> if you're wondering what I'm thinking. So by using a slightly different uh, 
very slightly different uh, uh, cues and values. They're going to come forward a little, but maybe not a lot. And I'm seeing if this touch of bright yellow is not too distracting. Let's see what this does. Maybe that is a little, little too much. Maybe not. Maybe not that size. It's so small. Sorry, I'm just talking to myself. <laughs> Don't listen to me. Should be one more person in here somewhere. I think. <laughs> I I think there he is. It's like, wasn't there another guy? We lose a guy out here. <laughs> uh, if you're just joining, welcome, 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 welcome. Uh, check the links in the description if you want to support this channel. Get some coloring courses, maybe learn something. That was a hard pitch I just did. That's about as salesy as I get <laughs> on this channel. So I'm I'm wondering like how much uh, how much can we add as far as like yeah I think I want to do it's like some much brighter maybe not too crazy bright but some uh, yeah, something and you just need something else I'm working on it <laughs> we're getting there we're getting there I'm just sort of like kind of dancing a few brighter values kind of down the way so we don't end up with just a lot of really dark stuff everywhere. And I'm kind of hitting all these little clumps as if, you know, they're being lit from the top like they're drawn. Um, and... I'm also wondering if I want to... Hmm. I'm wondering if I want to... No, I don't think I do. Um, I'm going to try something, and I might not keep it. I reserve the right to change my mind. Um... We've got reds and greens, primarily. So if we want to add a third major color that is not red and green, and you want to maximize the contrast of that color, it's going to be either yellow or blue, because those are the farthest away from red and green as you can get. Uh, but I've already got a good bit of yellow. Ish. Yellow enough. So if I put a yellow rim light up here, then it looks okay. But it's all similar, again, it's similar to what's here. If we go the opposite to 
the purple side. That's going to be quite intense on this because it is there's nothing, nothing like that purple on the screen. And so when you have, and I'm not saying I'm going to use this, but I'm just pointing out that it doesn't take much when that color is unique. It doesn't take much to stand out from everything else. But I don't know if I want to introduce a new color there without... Ooh, I like that green. So all this stuff works because Adam just knows how to draw. I like the blue. I like the blue. Maybe we saturate it a little bit. And I don't want the blue to like only be on that side. And so I'm going to spread this around just a little bit. And the other thing I wanted to try, which I don't know if I'm going to keep or not, is take that same color and let me see if I can do what I'm trying to do here. This is on top of the lines. And I don't know if this is what Adam wanted or intended, but I'm just going to try it. If it doesn't work, then I won't use it. But if it does, it might look cool. As if there was some light back here defining that edge just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. I don't think it needs it. I'm not saying it needs it. I just think it looks cool. <laughs> I think it helps. Just a, just a skosh of a hint of it over here. I don't want to distract from his face too much. And I'm going to push this a little brighter in a few spots. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like it. All right. So now, how are we doing on time? 52 minutes. Make these things look like they're glowing a little bit more. Let me get under the ink skirt where you belong. <laughs> You guys picking up this? You picking up what I'm putting down? Is this working? How are we doing? What's going on? <laughs> I just don't see the chat moving very much, so I got to check in and shake you guys up and make somebody say something and give me validation so I'm not sitting here talking to myself. <laughs> uh, let's see. Enthusiastic call to action there. That's right. There's somebody that knows a little more of their marketing terms. Uh, hello. Nice to do this again so soon. Welcome back. Uh, the courses are great. Bye bye. Thank you. Uh, da, 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 da. Sorry, I'm just catching up. So whenever I think of the color theory spectrum, I call it a color cake. Okay, fine with me. Is that the Ergo Grip pen thingy? Yes, it is. The blue is a brilliant choice. Thank you. So, like. The options I want you I want you guys to kind of understand why this stuff hap like why this works a little bit. Again, like don't overcomplicate it. It's easy for me to say that. The reason I chose that blue is because of the water. So like there's a little bit of blue in amongst the greens and browns. But it's kind of hard to see because I don't want to use really crazy bright blue values because it's 
It would not make this look right, I don't think. But it's just like wearing, I, I give this analogy all the time. When I wear this shirt, this shirt is green. It actually is more green in person than it is on the stream. Uh, and I hold my cat, her little green eyes just seem to be on fire, you know? Because it's like echoing, the green like reinforces it somehow and it makes them look greener. It's like somebody with blue eyes wears a blue shirt. Their eyes look like they're glowing. Um, so having a that strong kind of field of blue there, it allows the other blues to come up, I think, in my view. So, and I am going to add a little bit brighter blues in here so that they, they're not just completely dark everywhere, but that's kind of why I chose that blue. I didn't want to introduce a complete unique color for what's effectively just a little rim light. I, I don't know. I thought that looked weird. So, anyway, that's why. What is the ideal color temperature? I don't I don't know anything about that. Um, <laughs> mine, let me see. I, 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 I have a calibrator thing that I use, and that's what I know. It does things, and my monitor looks right. <laughs> uh, let's see. Where is... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I really don't know. Sorry. <clears throat> that would be something that uh, I would have to Google myself. All right, let's just do lots and lots of details. And we're going to make them subtle because I don't want to stomp over all Adam's work here. I think it looks freaking amazing already. And so I just don't want to screw it up. And I, I'm just adding just different colors, just things to anything that's too flat, anything that is all one color or something. Like I'm just trying to find places that are um you know that need a little help <clears throat> excuse me that's what i was missing i was like why does this house look weird to me it's that one little it's dark over here because of the inks underneath. I, I didn't have this little section darkened. There we go. Isn't that better? <laughs> so much better. Uh, that should be blue. Hold on. Is that in the inks or is that in the... Is that a... My flatter put a dark color down there. What is that? Hold on. No, this, that is a darker value, yeah. I'm actually going to brighten that a little bit because it's probably too dark to print very well. We'll bring that up to about right there. There we go. And now I'm going to darken this back. There we go. Um, I'm just going a little cooler. In that shadow side. And now I'm just gonna do just little touches of um, maybe places that are a little brighter or a little darker. And again, just really trying to pump the contrast here a little bit. But uh, shout out Adam. Shout out Adam for making a badass cover that is making me look very smart right now. <laughs> the coolness was here before I showed up. And 
luckily, my wife is a big green thumb gardener, and so I've I don't need to look at plant reference. Uh, but yeah, leaves kind of do that thing, just kind of like hair, where you get these little highlights in the middle that are really just from like the curve of the light hitting that point. Questions? You guys, you guys hanging out? We good? Everybody, everybody's following. You guys are all experts now. Uh, this looks like a cool piece to see in waveform when we're done. Remind me if you're still here when I'm done with this, and I'll, I'll try to. It takes a second to set that up, but yeah, it would. And the other thing that I'm, you'll notice that I made kind of a big leap forward in brightness for these highlights. And the other thing that does is it makes them look wet. Um, if you want something to appear to be slick, then do a bunch of really small little specular highlights like this. And it will, uh, it will look like someone uh, just sprayed them down. <laughs> hey, Curtain Chat, hope you're good. Hey, Masato, how's it going? Welcome, man. Good to see you again. Yeah, this is like, this might be the most fun I've ever had on a cover. <laughs> I didn't have to break out a lasso once. Not even once. Not that there's anything wrong with a lasso. <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong. And now we're starting to get a little uh, further down. We're starting to come down the side. So I'm not going to stick with the light quite as much as it is everywhere else. I'm just going to like kind of hint at it a little bit here. But as I'm going down the side, though, I should see less of that, you know? And that will indicate to the reader that we're getting like a subtle fall off and down the down his back because if I started brightening up all of this stuff down here with just as many highlights it's going to flatten his back because all the highlights are the same so I'm keeping the highlights near the top letting them fall off the edge it sells the fact that this thing is bulbous and big and round you know I'm kind of thinking like if I was standing right above this guy looking down, which leaves could I even see? And we're getting to the point that some of these leaves I wouldn't be able to see because they're they're hooked around the bottom. You know, like maybe the tip of that one comes out. It makes me think I need to recolor the forest I was doing last week. Now you're a leaf expert. <laughs> Let's see what, uh, so surely we've created, uh, what uh, what experts have I created in the last couple of years on this channel? Surely, surely there's a lot of people that are like experts at space now too. We've colored a lot of space on this channel. Uh, 
I think I'm actually gonna make this just a tad more subtle. Like, I like the fact that it's there, but I don't think it needs to be that bright. It's kind of like, oh, is that a bone? Is that a spine? Like, yeah, I don't want it to come forward too much. But I think I'm gonna have it like as if a few spots maybe that stick out from under that cloak are kind of catching the light, but not all of it, you know? This is pretty wicked, I gotta say. Pretty, pretty wicked. I dig it, I dig it, I dig it. And uh, again, we're on the underside of this thing, so I'm, I'm not using like really intense bright highlights here. Just a little bit lighter than what's there. And actually, I'm thinking with the leaves and all that stuff above it, if there was light bouncing around, it would be tinted green, wouldn't it? So maybe we do... Yes, yes, that's what we do. <laughs> it's like we're getting close, we're getting warmer. I'm actually going to tint this a little brown too. Yes, I dig it. I dig it. Last thing I'm going to try here before I send this over to Adam to see what he thinks about it. Uh, on the top of the lines, I'm going to do a little, little glowy, glowy action there. Whoops. Let me get, uh, let's go brighter. And again, really, really subtle. But if these things are wet and he looks like as swampy as he looks, then it would really reflect a lot of light. Because there's you'd get these little spots of haziness, you know what I mean? And again, it's really subtle, but it goes a long way. Uh, tone that down a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. And same thing on his forehead. I'm just going to hit that with a little bit of light there. I can barely even see that, but I can see it. Like too much brown down there, paint some of that away. Oops, wrong layer. There 
This thing's pretty wicked. I gotta say, I keep coming back to that term because I really think it applies. <laughs> I really like how this is coming out. Am I allowed to do that? Can I say that? What is this uh, self-confidence thing? What is that? my poor flatter thank you for selecting all of these leaves for me <laughs> you'll notice too I can kind of brighten up this guy a little bit because of the other bright colors around him I can kind of pump him up and he's still gonna stay sort of a little bit buried there uh, which is kind of what I want to do this little guy <laughs> and he's a redhead so he's not gonna have red hair on this one <laughs> we're gonna lean it red but we don't want it to be the only red thing down here He's really small, though, so I don't think it matters too much. We're getting there. We're almost done, I think. Well, I was wondering why his eyebrow looked weird. It's because I didn't have any blue in that part of the shadow. There's blue in all the other shadows, but not there. That's fixed. I'm really liking this. I'm really liking this cover. All right. How are we doing? Hour 15. I got here late. What does just the line art look like? Oh, the line art uh, is just as insane. Um, <laughs> uh, hold on. Let me get you a color underneath it. Come on. There we go. But yeah, it's freaking nuts, man. I saw this cover and I'm like... I get to do this <laughs> so yeah it's like there's so much crazy detail and a little value and a little everything in here so it's insane um let's see let's brighten these reeds are so small i think they need to be brighter just so you can see them sometimes when you know when you have a color that is when you're when the space that's on the screen is small and it's surrounded by a lot of blacks and other colors like that it it will tend to sort of blend with the black and so like you might want to like like over here like those reeds are really kind of hidden so uh what that does is it it's still small but now the black is blending with a brighter with a brighter color you know in your vision um Ooh, the volume is off. How about now? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it got... Like I said, every keyboard stroke that I'm hitting, for some reason, is affecting things on my other monitor. And I don't know how to deal with that.
Yeah, we're good back. I think we're back now. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, it is it's kind of unusable right now. Like if I What is going on? Yeah, I don't I don't know how to stop that. It's like clip is not maintaining Windows focus, they call it. I don't know what to do about that though. Doing a little bit of this on top of the lines just because I want a little bit brighter value through here so we can see this water. So I'm just doing some some painting on top. Like so. Lovely, lovely. And I, that's what I think I'm going to do to bring this water up just a little bit. Because he's got, it's fantastic texturing and work through here. And the line art is so dense. I want to make sure that's reading as water. Dense is, I mean, it's fine. It's not, it's not, it's not a complaint to be clear. <laughs> no, nope, too much. Right. Yeah, I'll take that. Yeah, there's uh, there's a few pl what I'm doing now. There's basically just a few places that I think his back is a little like kind of chunky, blocky, and so I'm trying to like uh, pull those together a little bit more so that it looks a little bit more like uh, cohesive. Maybe that's the word. But I would say this is pretty well cooked here. I think it is, I think it might be done. So um, I'm gonna send this over to Adam, see what he thinks. Before I wrap this up for today, uh, do you guys have any questions about anything in particular? Thanks again for watching, appreciate it. Uh, I use CSP, but what is the difference between the lighthouse, the dual box thing, and the box with the light dot? I don't know, man. I don't know. I would have to look it up. I don't, uh, I don't click those buttons. <laughs> I just don't know. I mean, the lighthouse is a reference. That's what that is. I mean, if you mouse over, it'll tell you what it is. Uh, you know, reference layer, uh, change layer, whatever. I think that just changes all the contents of the layer to that color. You know? Um, I just had one other idea. I'm going to test real quick. All right, let's see. Thank you. 
think I like it. Uh, what I'm going to do, we, we, talk, we talked a little bit about the Fresnel effect the other day. We're going to kind of push this a little bit with that, I think. So the Fresnel effect is like when you, uh, uh, what do you call it? The light sort of wraps around something from the backside. That's a poor definition, but it's kind of what's happening here. I'm imagining the light source behind him, and this is sort of what wraps around. Uh, the, 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 uh, waveform. Let me, let me see real quick if I can do this without it taking too long. It's, how does this work again? I'm trying to remember. All right. I have to do a second OBS instance. Thank God for strong video cards, right? And so this is the one you are not seeing. So... We're going to turn on the virtual camera. You guys are still with me? Yes. And then we're going to go to this website, which I will link. Somebody's going to ask. Here's the website. And let's see. Experimental stuff. Camera. Allow. Pull that out as a separate window. Give me just a moment, guys. Sorry for the delay. And let's see if this works. It would if I wasn't already capturing this over there. So I can't do that that way. Hold on. <laughs> You'll either think this is cool or really not understand it at all. That's what's about to happen <laughs> based on my uh, previous experience with this. But uh, let's see, is that our window? Nope, that's not it. Window, waveform, okay. And reset that size. I should set up a, an OBS thingamajig with this in there, shouldn't I? All right. Tell you what, let me turn this off just to not confuse anybody. And we'll hide that up there. And we'll make this a little bigger. Actually, let me just put all these controls off the side so you don't have to worry about them. And are you seeing my screen right now? Let's make sure that first before I go off on a big demo. <laughs> are you guys seeing? Yeah, you are. So what this software does, and it helps to see this in stages like this, is it'll first generate an isometric view. And now what it's going to do is all of the bright values it's going to, ex or all the values, it's going to extrude into a third dimension, okay? Give the Luma some depth, they call it, all right? Now, you're actually seeing the artwork and Clip Studio here, all right? So, let me hide the rest in Clip Studio stuff. And you can turn this up and see the value changes, okay? So, let's see, let's do, let's do that. And is this, nope, that's the tilt, that's not what I want. That needs, I haven't used this in a while, sorry. Um, Y'all? <laughs> yeah, there we go. So, let's try this one more time. Here's our, 
view of the hues, and this is not perfect, but these are the view of the hues with no value because we're looking at it from the top. And this are all of those colors extruded into their individual values with the brightest colors being at the top, which is why you get this little spike. Uh, my mouse is not showing up on the screen, is it? Uh, sorry, one second. Resizing this thing. Anyway, it kind of shows you like that bright rim light going down the left side. You can kind of see it going up into the values at the top. Um, but yeah, it is an interesting way to see value, basically. So most of this image is pretty dark. And this is what I, so that's what you're seeing all this stuff down here. And then the brightest stuff on the skull is at the top. You can see that how it kind of lines up there. Anyway, this is what it looks like <laughs> with that thing on. Somebody requested it. Um, this is nuts. <laughs> yeah. It's very cool, though, because what it actually is showing you is how the colors are actually arranged within the system they're in. So, like, right now on my screen, you guys are seeing the old, you know, the old color wheel I use all the time. You can't get a sense of how much brighter yellow is than purple until you see it like this. <laughs> you know? So, and I can actually turn... Let's turn that off. Uh, and I apologize for the other things on the screen. It's kind of hard to uh, to deal with that. But, um, but yeah. What I like about... And this all updates in real time. So, like... If I take a dark purple and paint it where the yellow is, you see how it sort of, it kind of cuts a hole in the yellow. Uh, it's kind of hard, yeah, it's kind of hard to see with all my crap in the way. Let's do that. There we go. I'll back that up. So, like... Oh, you guys aren't seeing my screen. You're only seeing the color wheel. Yeah, that's a little confusing. Uh, <laughs> anyway, you guys can kind of see the heights of all these colors. It's showing you their inherent values, okay? And so I can take this yellow and paint it out here just to show you all that it will adjust the rest of the image to compensate. So you can see all the yellow I painted there. Anyway, it's a great way to visualize how color actually lives. Uh, the, how would I put that? The container that all the colors you ever chose live in. The, the, the cylinder right here. <laughs> so anyway, we'll have to play with that again another day. And I thought Sudoku was the craziest thing I've heard in color theory. <laughs> no, like, here, here's what... I See, I had envisioned this years ago, and I was trying to find ways of explaining it, and no one understood it, and I couldn't find a, a way that made sense. And then I saw this, and it was like, holy crap, this is exactly what I wanted to see. Um, it gets really interesting if you... Let me show y'all something else real quick that I think is cool. So I'm going to pull up... Actually, I'm just going to pull up the color picker from Clip. I'm going to close... Actually, I, this is not very big on the screen, is it? So... What if we do that? And... Is that it? I don't know where that. Oh, there it is. Now, and let me, I'm just going to get off the screen for a second because there's too much crap on the screen to look at. Now you guys are seeing both at the same time. So if I, let me save this before I close it and forget about it. 
Bear with me a moment. All right, let's close that and close that. Now, you guys can see the difference in, whoops, sorry. So here's our color wheel. Now again, it looks strange at this angle because there's no value represented. It's only the hue. But you can really see just how much difference there is in the values in the color picker by looking at it this way. All the bright greens and reds and everything are near the top. Those are the brightest values. And then everything at the bottom is all the blues and purples. So it gives you a really good indication of like just how much value shift there is within nothing but the color, you know, the hues themselves. All of these things you're seeing, the little, uh, these are all the swatches. If you're wondering what that is, I can, you know, that's what all those little dots are. Um, but what I found fascinating about this, and I and I'll and I'm gonna wrap this up here in just a second, but for for my sake, and I can't speak for anybody else, but if I make a just a gray surface here, and actually Yeah, you can see that okay. Is that working? Is that all showing up? No, it's not all showing up. Sorry, I don't, I'm not very... Uh, wrong button. I'm not very good at this. <laughs> there we go. So, there's just a gray square on my... You know, in my Clip Studio. That's what you're seeing, that big thing shifting around there. So... It really shows, if I pick white and then pick a, uh, like a soft airbrush and just dab it, you see what it does there? It creates a little point of light because it is a lighter value. And so it's just, it's creating a little mountain there, right? And if I make one next to it, it's going to look just like, I'm just tapping the, you know, uh, well, you guys can't quite see the other thing either. Anyway, but these are all the bright values. And if I, let's leave that up for reference and then choose a dark one, then you're going to see it dig down. Okay. Because that line in the middle is, I don't know, it's roughly 50%, whatever it was, I think. And so you can really see how the value changes. And What's fascinating to me is it's much easier to think in terms of like, if I were to ask you to, hold on, let me hide my, uh, put that over there in this area just so I've got white and black to look at. And this I'm going to make a little smaller so you guys can see this. I think that's about everything. So it's so much easier in my mind to think if I've got three things that I need that, that's on my drawing and I want to have one of those things come forward more than the rest, whether that's in value or some other kind of contrast, when you're thinking in terms of like, well, what if I had a, a topography, like a map where it's like, I've got a valley I create of darkness and then I have a mountain of white and I can turn this around now and you can actually see that it's creating geography almost. And if you think about it in those terms, then it becomes really easy to like think about the values in terms of like it's a rolling hill and then you have some spike of contrast and the value that would, you know, make that white come forward against that black, whoops, didn't mean to do that at all. But that, that or went too far. But that little spot of white 
is is a is an elevation change. It's just and, and I'm I'm doing this trying to line it up so you guys can see. Uh, <laughs> this thing is. Sorry, I'm not used to it. There we. Nope, that's not it. Let me re save this again. There we go. But you can see that little bright. Looks like the uh, the Jedi Temple thing there. Like interesting changes in value become interesting changes in terrain. And I've found that a lot of the most interesting diagrams make for interesting topography, <laughs> you know? Uh, and it, it really, it's hard to see without playing with it. And it's, it's, it's all very 3D and kind of technical, but um, it just, it makes so much sense though, how, uh, you know, a bright yellow and a dark blue you can really see the difference in that shift in a way that is hard to imagine in any other way, you know? So that's why when I tell y'all, like, have something that's one color. That's my brush, by the way, that you're seeing make that little pattern, the little ring on the screen. Um, so, you know, dig a hole and then maybe build up something. That looks like a sombrero. Um, or by the same token, have something that is very tall and then, you know, introduce, uh, well, that's a deep valley there, but yeah, introduce something to change the terrain and make it interesting. There's something in that analogy in there somewhere. I don't know. Somebody else can help me make sense of that one day. <laughs> I, I, I've explained it like a handful of times on this channel and, and, and most of the time I get well that's that's neat <laughs> and everyone's like I think this guy's crazy uh, let's see when you first introduced this it blew my mind I still use it every so often I love it like I, I wrote the guy that made the thing and I'm like man this is the coolest thing I've ever seen like this <laughs> this is exactly what I've been trying to explain to my audience for years because, you know, it's what makes color difficult to understand. You know, every, I say this all the time, but every color choice is always a comparison, right? Every choice. There's no such thing as I picked a color. You picked a color that is contrasting with another color. Whether you thought about it or not, that's what you did. There's no such thing as I'm going to pick a color for my project. You're always, always, always thinking this needs to be a little lighter, a little darker, less saturated, more saturated, you know, warmer, cooler, grayer, blacker, wh whatever it is. It's all relative and it's all a comparison. So the problem with 2D <laughs> the problem with 2D representations of that is that we can't show it all. We just can't show it all at one time. Um, we've got our, we, we can get value on the screen. It's right there. We can get saturation on the screen. Uh, you know, here and here and here and here. But saturation is, you have to change it. Like you've got to, you've got to sh move, you know what I mean? And then you lose your blue. Um, or you can look at my color wheel and that'll give you saturation. If you do that, saturation and hue, but won't give you value. <laughs> and so the most important concept in all of art is measuring the difference between two colors. At a, at, in, my, in my opinion, at a very base level, it's the most basic skill you must have. And the systems that we use to measure that distance, we have to take two measurements and then do math in our heads. You know, we have to go, well, it's in this way, it's a brighter, but the hues, I don't know how, you know. So if, if uh, that's why I'm trying so hard right now to build an app that will basically what it's doing is you're going to have your color wheel uh you know across if you can think about it like this it would be like 
red, purple, blue, green, yellow, orange. So kind of imagine this stuck here. <laughs> it's back to what's going on. You know, you would have all your colors going down this way. Uh, these would be bright. These would be dark. The edge is saturated and the inside is not. What I want to do is be able to have a standard color picker there also that so people know what they're looking at. And this is not very good. Not a very good drawing <laughs> with all of my crap all over it. Yeah, this is really, really horrible drawing. Black. There we go. There we go. There we go. Is it coming together yet? So you can imagine picking a color and then this thing basically cutting itself open to show you that color and where it lives in the system. So you can measure, you can look at that dark red and say, oh, that dark red's here and the bright blue is up here. And you can see how those are related to each other. Because once you see that relation, the contrast math becomes so simple. Anyway, is that the Munsell color chart? Mm-hmm. It's the same one. It's this. It's this. It's the same system everybody's used to working in. They just don't know they're working in it. Most people don't. <laughs> I mean, some people, I say most, some people understand this. Um, they might not think about it in these terms, but they get the idea. I think this would actually give people that don't have that natural... 3D visualization gene to be able to see this, you know? And so I want to have this and then like a regular color picker next to it so you can go, oh, let me pick that one and that's right here. And that color is here and it's over here, you know? That's the idea. And, uh, but anyway, I'm, I'm using, uh, I'm using the, uh, chat GPT to write all the code. <laughs> and it's doing a pretty good job. Right now I've got a cylinder and you can turn it but the colors aren't right. I don't know. I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm trusting this robot to code for me. That's why it's taking so long. <laughs> uh, I never thought that hues have inherent values like this. Let me show you. Let me show you how. Let me show you something real quick. So if I screenshot, whoops. If I screenshot this color picker and put it into here, set the put a layer on top, set it to color mode, and fill it with black. So you can actually see that there, there are obviously areas of this color wheel that are brighter than others. And if you know yellow is the brightest color, you can pick it out without needing to see it. <laughs> so, you know, uh, the brightest part on this thing, which is right here at the top, that's the yellow. That dark part opposite, well, that's, you know, the dark purple or dark or blue in this case. Um, yeah, blue. It's not exactly opposite, you know, it, it, it's supposed to be on a real color wheel with the, with the complements. But, um, but yeah, it, 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 sh it kind of shows you that even through all of this, uh, box here, whether it's white or yellow, it's all kind of coming out very, very bright. But if I, if I flip down to, well, I'd have to take another screenshot. That's not a real, <laughs> I'm like, why, why isn't that working? Cause it's not a real thing, Kurt. Um... Where'd my snipping tool run off to? There we go. So this time doing it with a dark blue, putting that in here, same thing, put the color mode on top. And this is a great way of showing just how dark the saturation adds, <laughs> just how much darkness the saturation adds. 
this right here that is a maximum bright blue but it's maximum contrast saturation i meant it's maximum saturation so look at how dark that is over there so when you're thinking in terms of values sometimes the answer is to go saturated because we tend to think in terms of value up and down up and down this system value you know look at how this value changes I'm going across the color wheel here and it's moving up and down the color wheel on in the actual system so as an aside just don't forget that sometimes darker color actually means more saturation keep that in mind all right if that is the coolest thing you've seen what is the warmest or fluffiest thing you've seen i have no idea uh is that the munsell color chart i think i answered that yes uh i'm actually doing some quick color studies around 10 or 15 minutes to paint something later uh i'll try something different it's helping cool all right any other questions i don't like there are is this how normal mapping works i think so I'm, I'm, I don't know a whole lot about I know that concept. We're talking about like in 3D modeling. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Because that's, that tech's been around a while. And so I think it's literally just darker values equals lower. You know, lower relief, lower texture. And brighter values equals higher texture. What he's talking about is like in video games, you know how you ever look at like a wall of rock? And it looks like you can see the little deviations and things, but like that would be insanely expensive to actually have the shadows do that. So what they do is they put a normal map on the rock texture that does what I was doing there, where it's hitting the spots of white and black and gray and things, and it gives it what appears to be elevation changes. Anyway, this has been fun. Thank you all for watching. Click buttons. And I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.